In this short video, we're going to have an introduction to eigenvalues and eigenspaces. Let's take a look at some pictures first. So what we're looking at here is on the left, you can think of this as being your domain. I mean, they're both R2, but we're thinking about this as being the domain of our or vectors that are in the domain of a linear transformation. So maybe this yellow vector is our vector v. And then on the right, we see the images of those vectors under some transformation t. So this is t of v, for example. And then <clears throat> maybe down here, this could be the green vector could be a dark green vector would be u. And here we see its image on the right. And so it's kind of interesting to look at these types of pictures to see what the impact is of the transformation. And we can see that for most of these vectors, now you have to be a little careful with the scales on these graphs. So this dark green vector has length one. In fact, all of these vectors here in the uh, domain, in the input, all are unit vectors. And we can see that uh, most of them have both their length and their direction changed by this linear transformation t. But there are a couple of cases, namely the vectors that started out on the x-axis remain on the x-axis, and uh, their lengths didn't change either. So here's another transformation. Again, the idea is that I have a vector v here, and then some transformation t is applied, and we get its image vector, and its image vector is now over here. Now this transformation is also interesting. Uh, again, we can see that uh, uh, most of the vectors have their direction changed. So the uh, yellow vector, I uh, don't have arrows on these, but if it was pointing outward, now it's pointing, well, southwest instead of northeast. And um, so the uh, now the dark green vector was on the uh, x-axis, positive x-axis. Now it's on the negative y-axis in its image. But again, there are a couple of vectors, so this light green and this gray vector, that uh, did not change. And let's look at one more case here. Again, here we have our set of input vectors. And again, some transformation t is applied to those input vectors. And then over here, this shows our uh, output vector. So this would be t of v. So the a yellow vector wound up uh, having a different length, and it's now on the x-axis. And But there are a couple of vectors, again, the ones that were on the y-axis, uh, which did not uh, change their length nor their direction. So, in general, uh, most of the uh, image vectors or vector images are not parallel to the original vectors, but some of them are, and those are actually the ones that we're interested in. We're interested in uh, the vectors that are parallel vectors that whose images are parallel to the original vector, and we'd like to know how did they change in length if they did. Um, if a, this is the case where you start with a vector v, you apply t, and its image is parallel to the input vector, uh, we say that the span of v is invariant. So in geometry, we say that there's actually an invariant line. That, um, uh, but 
in linear algebra, we know that the span of a single vector in R2 or R3 is a line. And so uh, we're saying the same thing, but just using different words there. So here we're saying that this subspace, the span of a single vector, is unvariant under the transformation. Both the input vector and the output vector belong to the same subspace. And so if there's parallel, then you have a scale factor lambda, uh, which tells us how the length changed. So AV is parallel to V. So AV is the representation of the image of V under the transformation T. And that's going to be parallel to the original vector with some scale factor lambda. So this equation, the AV equals lambda V, we can rewrite this in different forms. Of course, we could put a matrix on the right-hand side, because if I put the identity matrix there, identity matrix times V is just V. So that's the same thing as AV equals lambda V. But this is going to be useful for us, because we're interested in finding what are these values for lambda, and what are these vectors V, which are invariant under a given transformation. So let's see what else we can do with this. Algebraically, we could, of course, uh, set one side equal to the zero vector. We can factor out the V on the right-hand side there. And notice what this tells us, right, that the uh, matrix A minus lambda I must be a, uh, well, it cannot be an invertible matrix because the vector V that we're considering must be a, a non-zero vector. And so that tells me that there is a non-zero vector in the null space of A minus lambda I. And of course, we could rewrite this uh, with the zero on the, or the zero vector on the left hand side, and then factor out the vector v again. And when all we've done is taken this matrix inside the parentheses and multiply it through by negative one. So we could also look at it as lambda i minus a. Now, if you have a non-zero vector which satisfies that condition, that the uh, product AV is parallel to V, it's called an eigenvector, or a more archaic phrase is proper vector. And the scalar, that scale factor, is called the eigenvalue. And you put them together, we call it an eigenpair. And so we're, this eigen you're going to see throughout this chapter. I mean, we have eigenvalues, eigenvectors, eigenspaces. So there's some interesting properties of this. Uh, certainly, the eigenvectors uh, are not unique uh, because you can take any eigenvector, multiply it by a scalar, and you'll get a new eigenvector because uh, you're just multiplying both sides of this equation by that constant k. Uh, since the eigenvector is a basis vector for the null space of the matrix, right? Um, it is a non-zero vector, and uh, it is in the null space. And there are non-zero vectors. That means uh, that matrix is not invertible, has a non-trivial null space, and we can say, therefore, that the determinant is zero. The determinant of A minus lambda I has to be zero. Now, the determinant is something that we can actually calculate. So this gives us an algebraic tool for determining what these eigenvalues are. What are these values of lambda? And so um, here's restating what we just said, that if we were trying to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, 
of a matrix. That is, again, we're trying to find the vectors whose images are parallel to the original vector. Our first step will be to determine those scale factors, which are called the eigenvalues. And we're going to use the fact that, oh, this matrix lambda i minus a, or a minus lambda i, its determinant is going to be 0. So let's actually use this and calculate uh, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this 2 by 2 matrix. So what we're going to do, of course, is calculate the determinant of lambda i minus a. So I've got lambda times i, that's this first 2 by 2 matrix, subtracting off the a matrix here. I'll just go ahead and do that algebra, matrix algebra. And so I'll get lambda plus 7, 6, negative 9, lambda minus 8. So what this determinant is going to give me is a formula or expression in terms of lambda. So let's go ahead and calculate that using the well-known formula for the determinant. I'll just take the product of the diagonals, subtract the product of the anti-diagonals, multiply that out and do some algebra, and then I'm going to set that equal to 0 because, again, in order for this to be singular, oops, I used a word there that we don't know, Singular is the same thing as non-invertible. So in order for this to be not invertible, its determinant must be 0. So we get this formula in terms of lambda. It's a polynomial. We'll go ahead and set it equal to 0. This particular one we can solve by just factoring. And we get these two different values for lambda. Lambda, lambda could be 2, or lambda could equal negative 1. So before we talk about the eigenvectors, let's make some notes here. First of all, the determinant that we calculated there turned out to be a polynomial where lambda is the variable, and that's always going to be the case. And this polynomial is called the characteristic polynomial of A. Just like we see the word eigen used over and over again, we can see the uh, word characteristic used over and over again. So you may see eigenvalues called characteristic values sometimes. Um, we get the characteristic polynomial. When we set that characteristic polynomial to zero, we call it the characteristic equation. So uh, there are two real solutions. We know from algebra that if you have a polynomial equation that you can have a real equation, you can have a real solutions, you can have solutions that have uh, repeated roots, and you could have uh, imaginary solutions. But here we had two real solutions. And now how do we use those solutions then to find the corresponding eigenvectors. Well, we know that uh, the matrix for each value of lambda here, the matrix lambda i minus a, uh, has a non-trivial null space. So we just want to find the vector or vectors that belong to that null space. And we know how to do that. So we're going to try to find uh, the uh, null space vector of 2 times i minus a. So let's go ahead and work out the algebra. So now my matrix here is 9, 6, negative 9, negative 6. And we can just see by inspection that this is a uh, not an invertible matrix because the rows and the columns are parallel to each other. And this is for the 2 by 2 case, right? Remember, when you have two vectors, they cannot be uh, linearly independent if they are parallel to each other. And so let's go ahead and transform that to 
uh, reduced row echelon form. Just takes a couple steps there. We can get the zero row. And then uh, we get our leading one. And by sight reading, we can see that a vector in the null space of R, which will be the same vector in the null space of lambda 2 lambda minus A, uh, is negative 2 thirds 1. So um, you can write it either way. I mean, if I write it as A minus 2I, that's going to have the same null space as the opposite of it, which would be 2I minus lambda. And we don't uh, like to use fractions if we can avoid it, so we can go ahead and clear the fractions in this vector, because remember any multiple of this vector will also be in the null space. So we'll go ahead and multiply through by 3. And a so an eigenvector with the with integer coefficients for this matrix would be uh, negative 2 comma 3. And we can just verify this. How can we verify that? Well remember that it should be that if I multiply a times v, the result should be 2 times v. So let's check that. Here's a times rv. The result is negative 4, 6. And we can just look through inspection that that is indeed twice the original input vector, negative 2, 3. Now let's do the same thing then for lambda equals negative 1. So as we can see that the you know the eigenvectors go with the eigenvalue and that's why we call them eigenpairs they correspond to each other uh, we'll use u for this eigenvector and so uh, again we're taking what negative one times i minus a and we're going to find the vector in its null space all right so again i get a uh, matrix here. I can transform it to reduced row echelon form. And I can uh, see that the uh, corresponding vector in the null space is going to be negative 1, 1. And uh, again, we can check that. Right? What should that, how, what is our check? If I multiply our original matrix A times negative 1, 1, the output should be negative 1 times u, so 1 comma negative 1. And so let's go ahead. We multiply the original matrix A times negative 1 comma 1. I get as output uh, 1 comma negative 1, which of course is the negative 1 times the original input matrix. All right, so uh, again, I want to emphasize that uh, the determinant of lambda i minus a, if that determinant is equal to 0, then the uh, determinant of the opposite of lambda minus a, so a minus lambda i, will also be equal to 0. And uh, usually it's easier to compute a minus lambda i because um, subtracting all of a uh, means that you have to remember to change all of the signs. But uh, since uh, lambda i is just a diagonal matrix, it's easier to remember that. Uh, but it's really a choice. Whatever is more comfortable for you, and sometimes it depends on the problem, one way will be more convenient than the other. So we're going to define an eigenspace. And we're going to define eigenspace for every real number lambda. So the Lambda, in this case, is not just restricted to be an eigenvalue. It's any real number. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, given me a real number, I am going to find all vectors v where a times v is parallel to v with that scale factor lambda. Now, that's equivalent to saying that uh, v must belong to the null space of a minus lambda i. So for most values of lambda, anything that is not an eigenvalue, uh, 
the corresponding eigenspace for that value of lambda is just the zero vector. So, but if lambda is an eigenvalue, then it's non-trivial. And it's going to have the eigenvectors of A associated with lambda. And uh, we can say that lambda is uh, an eigenvalue. I missed a, a word here. If and only if the eigenspace is at least one dimensional. So back to our example, our two by two example. It, remember that the eigenvalues were positive two and negative one. So the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals five is just the zero vector. But the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals two was the vector that we found. It's the span of that vector, because remember any multiple of that vector is also an eigenvector. While the eigenspace of uh, A with lambda equals negative one was the span of negative one comma one. Now, in general, we know that calculating the determinant can be challenging, but for triangular matrices, we got a break. We just uh, calculate the product of the diagonal entries. And so finding the characteristic polynomial and eigenvalues of triangular matrices is quite simple. Um, and in fact, for uh, diagonal matrices, we even get the eigenvectors without performing any calculations. So let's just think about that for a minute, right? If you have a triangular matrix, and let's just write one here. So I suppose I have an upper triangular matrix. So 2, 0, 1, 1, 1, 5, zeros below the diagonal. And if you subtract lambda times the identity matrix, well, that would just be lambda 0, 0, 0, lambda 0, 0, 0, lambda. You get an upper triangular matrix. It's just 2 minus lambda, and then the non zero entry, uh, 1 minus lambda then 5 minus lambda. So the determinant here is just uh, the uh, product of the diagonal entries, which will give us the characteristic polynomial in factored form. And we can see that the zeros of that characteristic polynomial are indeed the diagonal entries. So let me move over. So what do we have then? If you have a triangular matrix, we look at the diagonal entries, we get the uh, characteristic polynomial in factored form by just looking at lambda minus c1 times lambda minus c2 up to lambda minus Cn, that is the determinant of, in this case, lambda minus a. And so the eigenvalues are just the diagonal entries. And in the case of a diagonal entry, uh, every, uh, the eigenvector corresponding, or an eigenvector corresponding to each diagonal entry is the corresponding standard basis. So an eigenvector can only belong to one eigenspace. And that makes sense, right? That uh, if uh, a times v equals lambda 1 times v, so let's think about this. Let's put some indices. If I have a times v1 equals lambda 1 v1, and a times v2 equals lambda 2 v2, then um, 
you can't have a times v1 equaling lambda 1 times v v2. So that wouldn't make any sense. So um, in particular, if lambda 1 is different from lambda 2, uh, then these two could not have an intersection. Let's just think about this for a minute. That if, uh, if uh, I had if a v2 then were to equal lambda 1 v2 then what could I do? I could subtract these two. I could subtract which would say a times v2 minus v1 equals I'm sorry let me get this written out correctly a v1 would be uh, lambda 1 v1 And so this would be lambda 1 v1, or v2 minus v1. But we're saying that a v2 also equals lambda 2 v2. And so that's probably what I should be looking at. So let's make that correction. And if I subtract these two, I'll get 0 on this side equals lambda 1 minus lambda 2 times v2. Now v2 is not 0. Otherwise, it couldn't be a, uh, uh, a non-trivial entry in the eigenspace. And lambda 1 minus lambda 2 can't be 0, uh, since lambda 1 and lambda 2 are different eigenvalues. They're different from each other. So neither one of these is 0. So we've got a contradiction. So that's an important idea, that uh, the intersection between two eigenspaces is the zero vector. So we're going to talk more about these uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors and eigenspaces uh, throughout this chapter. We're going to see how we can uh, calculate or do more examples of calculating eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors or bases for the eigenspaces and we'll see how this connects to some of our geometric transformations.